And we will hold the clock at 31 seconds. Well, there you have it. The weather, once again, a major factor, of course, in determining whether or not there will be a liftoff of the Atlantis, the shuttle. They have been extraordinarily cautious, of course, since the Challenger disaster, but the high winds at high altitudes is something that has concerned them from the outset because it could affect the ability of the shuttle to get into orbit. It could be tipped over, as a matter of fact, if the winds uh, don't match up with what they have with onboard computer alignment of the shuttle. Do I have that right, Bob Bazell, at, at the Cape? Well, uh, Tom, according to what Hugh Harris just said, that they could, they're calling a weather hold because of the weather at a TAL site. TAL is NASA talk for transatlantic abort. That means the base across the Atlantic where they would land in an emergency, the weather suddenly got bad. That's a very unusual situation. They've never had a weather hold for a transatlantic abort site. The transatlantic abort site uh, is at an Air Force base in Spain. That's supposed to be a secret because we're not supposed to know which direction the shuttle is headed in, but of course we do know that the shuttle is headed uh, in a northwesterly direction from here and Spain would be the emergency situation. We, it might be that that weather is just a temporary uh, front moving through or something and they'll hold here. They can hold at T minus 31 seconds for a while, but once they've gotten down this far, it's uh, a lot of things have been set in motion that take a long time to recycle. Well, it, we think probably what they have um, adverse la landing conditions in Spain, perhaps cloud cover of some kind or maybe even cross winds that are unacceptable. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's one of those things. Well, they haven't told us which it is yet. It will go down to this point of T-minus 31 seconds that we mentioned before, which is just before the onboard computers would take off. This is the, the only point that they can hold here. Oh, they've... Tom? Yes, Bob? We've just got word that they might go through the T-minus 31 seconds. And they, they did it. They did. It's, it's a go for launch. Okay, let's just oh, no, stand sorry, by and watch. I'm sorry. Nope, sorry. My mistake there. They did hold a T-minus 31 seconds. All right, well, it's a little confusing for everyone uh, there at the moment because these are last-minute, split-second decisions that they're making. Uh, they're taking a look at the weather, not only at the Cape. Seek announcing that we have uh, uh, several minutes that we can hold at this particular point. Uh, we are in a hold because of weather conditions at the overseas uh, transoceanic abort sites. If we pick up the clock at this point, we would go for auto sequence start. Uh, this is when Atlantis's four redundant computers assume primary control of the vehicle. You may remember back in the uh, history of the shuttle program on the initial launch, we stopped right here at 31 seconds because the we redundant computers. Go for launch. Here we go. Hugh Harris. We have a go for we launch. We have a go for th the launch director has directed the to pick up the count. Three, two, one, T minus 31 seconds and counting. We have a go for auto sequence start. The SRB hydraulic power units have started and moving those engine nozzles. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. We have a go for main engine start. Seven, six, we have main engine start, four, three, two, one, ignition and liftoff. Atlantis begins another space voyage as it clears the tower. through maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle. Three engines now at 65%.
Atlanta's been given a go at throttle up. All three main engines back up to 104%. Downrange distance 7 nautical miles. Critical moment because it was at or about this time that Challenger didn't Three make. good engines, three good APUs, relative velocity about 2,900 feet per second. Downrange 12 nautical miles. Mark 1 minute 50, three engines up at 104%. No public communication with the astronauts because of the military nature of this mission. Solid rocket boosters fall away. SRB separation. Now 31 nautical miles downrange. Remember the solid rocket boosters uh, fall into the... First stage no performance usable. nominal according to the flight dynamics officer that call made to the crew. They're now passing through 204,000 feet, downrange distance 46 nautical miles. Everything so far looking They've good. They've been given That's a call indicating good, a two-engine capability to their primary overseas landing site. Now 55 nautical miles downrange. Three engines still up and running at 104%. Climbing at 1,500 feet per second, altitude 245,000 feet. Three main engines, as you heard, now all firing. Next critical mark would be at about the uh, four minute plus four second point. That'd be negative return, meaning the shuttle after that point could no longer return to the space center. Live from Cape Kennedy, Space Shuttle Atlantis continuing to disappear into the blue. With so far as can be determined, everything right on schedule and looking very good. Mission Control Houston, Flight Director Gary Cohen pulling their positions here in the control center, all reporting to go. This is simulation. Three good engines still up and running at 104%. Solid rocket boosters have fallen away. Negative return call just went up to the crew. That indicates uh, they no longer have the capability to do a return to launch site abort. And the uh, liquid fuel tank still attached to the Challenger. It later on, of course, will be falling away. And they're riding upside down. Always, uh, no matter how many of these you see, it always strikes you when there was something wrong. <laughs> Let's have a replay of, of the liftoff, Michael Collins. So far as you can see, everything seems to be uh, perfect. Everything beautiful, Dan. The uh, weather, of course, in Africa, a brief concern there, but uh, now they're beyond that point, and uh, everything looks uh, as good as it possibly can. When it makes this turn, explain, as you have so often in the past, why they make that turn and put the space shuttle on bottom of the tanks. Well, it's... Uh, the turn is a little more accentuated on this flight because they're following a path to the northeast and uh, so as soon as it clears the, uh, the launch tower it rolls uh, to a heading which will allow it to depart to the northeast and give it a more advantageous uh, orbit over the surface of the earth uh, later, cover more ground you might say. And, and it it's easier from a stress point of view to do this uh, with the crews head down toward the Earth and pulling positive G's on the shuttle rather than to reverse the process and push over. This is a replay of Space Shuttle Atlantis blasting off perfectly this morning. What does it feel like for an astronaut? You're riding upside down, tremendous stress on, on you personally and not knowing what's going to happen in the next nanosecond. Well, these people are, uh, are mostly former what? fighter pilots, and they don't mind being upside down, Dan. I mean, for them, that's a, a normal condition. This is another replay from another view of the blast off.
have a, a bit more power than you do have in your average fighter plane, I'll say that, and that's always of some concern with these gigantic rockets churning away down below you, but uh, the aerodynamics of it are pretty much the same, and what you see out the window is pretty much the same. This is another replay of, as we said, from a somewhat wider shot. No matter how many times you see it, Michael Collins always a unique, eerie beauty. It's uh, beautiful, and it's also a little scary right at the beginning. Uh, these machines are, are of unparalleled power, and yet they have to be quite fragile because they're so lightweight. And it's always a matter of concern, at least to me, the first few seconds to see the thing actually get up off the ground and clear that tower. Yet another view of the blast off. Bruce Hall in Florida, no indication of any trouble at any time this morning other than uh, those difficulties with the weather. Stan, there's just a very few minor problems, nothing that would uh, threaten the launch. But the happiest person around today at this moment has got to be Boot Gibson, the shuttle commander. He's made 10 trips to the launch pad. That's a record. Also, he holds the record seven times. He's been disappointed and had to come back because of delays. But this is his third flight into uh, space, and he is a very happy man. And with that roll, we saw the first critical development of this flight. And that looked like it was going to a 57-degree inclination. That is important because it gives a clear indication that this particular uh, satellite will be going, as has been speculated, over the Soviet Union, and it will be a northeast one. trip across the uh, orbit. Yet another shot of the blast-off itself. Bruce Hall, NASA has been a, a stickler for uh, the classified nature of this, NASA being a civilian agency doing this job Three, for the military. Two, one. It's an all-military crew. Uh, but explain to me again, because I don't quite understand it. it, there's no secret to the Russians about what this mission is about. Why should they go through even the motions of, of keeping uh, so much secrecy? For example, no uh, public uh, broadcast of the communication with the crew. As much as anything, Dan, is the case for it. This is the way the military has done it for 20 years. And it is much more difficult for the military to change procedures than to continue them. There really is, uh, according to many of the space experts, no reason. Most civilian space experts know exactly what this is. The Soviets know what it is. The Soviets have uh, trawlers off the Florida coast. And uh, many people say and have said publicly that on Mr. Gorbachev's desk, within a matter of hours, there are going to be pictures of this. And after the satellite is released, he will have pictures of that satellite on his desk way before this crew lands at Edwards uh, Air Force Base in California in a couple of days. This is CBS.